So in 2003, um, I decided to run for Congress for Dick Kephart's old seat. I'm Mark Smith. I paid for and authorized this ad, and I'm asking for your vote. The country was kind of going in a strange direction. Um, you know, we had just gone into the war in Iraq, and, uh, and we also, the economy was pretty bad. And so that concerned me. I'm, I'm come from humble, you know, blue collar background, and I just felt like the opportunity that America's always promised, you know, to move up, do better than your parents, was kind of disappearing. And so the first part of the campaign, all you do is try and raise money. So I'm not a person who likes to ask people for things, and that's all you do in a campaign. So I would call you up, Hello? and I would say, Hey, how's it going? Do you want to give me? And then I would just say some outrageous amount because because you might say yes. You're going all the time because I've got a. I mean, I had a hard job at the law school and I had to do it. I was drinking probably uh, five pots of coffee a day. I'm not exaggerating either. I remember one time. This is towards the end of the campaign. I'm having a fundraiser at our meet and greet at a coffee house. It's like six o'clock. I'm tired. And, um, and so I thought, I'll drink some coffee to see if it does anything. So I drank like six cups of coffee real quick. And it doesn't do anything. And I remember thinking, man, that's a bad sign. I'm drinking six cups of coffee. I don't even feel it anymore. But then I'm giving my speech, which I've given a hundred times before. I can kind of do in my sleep. And during my speech, I felt myself coming outside of my body and looking at myself. And I remember thinking, because, you know, you, once you've done the speech, you can do it in your sleep practically. I remember thinking, oh my God, this is not good at all, you know? And so that kind of sums up the campaign for me. And you start thinking, oh, I'm not sure this is going to happen. But then, like, I don't know if it was a month before the election, the Post-Dispatch endorsed me. That was, that was like a huge win. And if, for me, that was the highlight of the campaign. So even if you don't win, Post-Dispatch said very nice things about me. Um, uh, I still read that when I get depressed or something, you know. Uh, no, I don't really, but, but it's, it was nice and it was kind of the highlight and it kind of legitimized the campaign. And, and obviously I didn't win, so um, I failed on the campaign. Um, you know, if you want to just put it uh, you know, in stark terms, because you either win or you lose, and that's what you call somebody who doesn't win in a campaign. They were a loser. I don't think I would have been happy in Congress looking at what happened the last 10 years where it was just, I like doing things, I like getting moving things forward. That's not how Congress is working. I would have been away from my wife. I, I wouldn't have liked that. Um, I probably wouldn't have had my fourth child, who's eight years old. I can't imagine my life without her. Um, there's all these things. I, I, I wouldn't have this job that I have now, which I really love, um, and these other opportunities. So it's like most things, you know, it feels like failure, but then like a phoenix, you come back and you get some new things and, and it, it always works out. If you don't have failure in your life, you're not taking enough risks. And I remember when I came over to the law school and the dean of the law school at the time, Dan Ellis, uh, I was telling him about something I wanted to do, and I was kind of saying, I'm a little worried about this, and I wanted to, you know, I was doing kind of CYA thing. This may go bad. And he said to me, look at Mark, you know, if we're, if we're not making mistakes, we're not trying the right stuff, we need to do that. And it was, it, was, it was really freeing to have somebody, and I tell that to my staff all the time.